let's go to the segments of salesforce data cloud all right let's uh, start with data ingestion data ingestion basically means you capturing or gathering or collecting the data from all of the different uh, data points or all of the different platforms or all, all of the different salesforce clouds that's all what data ingestion is bringing that data into salesforce data cloud is data ingestion am i correct correct then comes data spaces data spaces uh, is a concept that i also took some time to understand uh, but i'll make sure that you understand in a very simple way uh let's try to understand some key concepts before understanding data spaces number one is there is something called as data lake right and there is something called as data spaces and then there is something called as data model data lake is an object in which all of the information that you have got from data ingestion gets stored so like let's say i have got a jar in here and i'm collecting the water from all of the different glasses that are here a a a, a, a glass of water of uh, like made of made up of steel made up of copper made up of a uh, glass and i'm collecting all of that water into this jar right so this jar is data lake object and th the process of collecting all of this water into this jar is called as data ingestion hope that uh, is very easy to understand is it yeah it's easy to to understand for the marketing people as well so <laughs> it must be easy for you as well uh so this is uh, this is data lake object now all of the water that you have collected over here is like let's that's data right now in order to categorize that data in uh, with different different characteristics like location region uh i mean gender or different other characteristics that you want to segregate in it into uh based on which you would want other people in your organization to have access to it is uh like and you you want other people in your organization to have access to is something that gets done through data spaces so let's try and understand so in this jar there are different different uh, taps that are going to be attached at different different spaces and places uh from which there is going to be water that will be coming out but the water is of course same and mixed up so i i think i used the bad example but uh let's try to un understand that a little better there are different taps over here which provides you different kind of information and data spaces is the key to get that particular type of information or to segregate a particular type of data and to provide the access to it with the help of permission sets to the users of your organization uh, who are using salesforce data cloud uh, in order to access that data so like let's say vishwajit can use the uh, data for us region but i can use the data for india region so i'll have to create data spaces for us region uh, and the access to that us region data will be provided to vishwajit uh, but the access to the uh india india region data uh through data spaces will be provided to me and there will be different data space for india region that will be created and the permission set accesses will be provided to me from there so that's all what data spaces is so the first thing that happens is data ingestion then uh, we create data spaces for people in our uh people who have access to this uh, data or people who have access to salesforce data cloud to have access to a certain type of data and we do not want everybody to have the uh have the access to all of the data hence we uh, create data spaces next is data modeling data modeling is uh, redefining the data that you have collected from all of the different platforms through data ingestion and how do you do that uh, like let's say you that you have collected all of the information but right now in order to do some activity you only want their purchase history their support tickets their uh, location and their gender um and 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 the recent products that they have watched on your website right uh, if you're an e-com if you're running an e-commerce business so for you know in order to get all of uh, only only this kind of information from that complete data set that you have gathered into uh, the data lake object you are going to create a data model and in that data model you'll be able to pick up information from uh, different data lake objects uh, and then you'll be able to create that data model and that data model will, will uh, is is going will later that data model is going to be used uh, later in order to unify and then segment and then do other stuffs uh, and then to plan the activities uh, that you want to do with that particular data so like you've got all of the data now you want the data on which you want to perform some actions or on which you want to do some ai predictions or on which you want to do some unification and then the ai prediction or uh, and uh, yeah you want some data only from that big lake of uh, data 
So in that case, you're going to do uh, create a data model, and that is something that we call as data modeling. And then uh, the data, data unification comes up. Uh, what data unification does is we're going to make you understand this with the help of a table later on. We are right yes. now not using it, uh, but try to understand it in this way. So let's say uh, Shrey's data is stored into three different uh, rows, and uh, the information into three different rows has come from three different platforms, and the information into all of that uh, is uh, is a little different e even my email id is different so what what is going to happen in unification is all of that uh, information is going to get unified uh, and not just the email i'm talking about but also like let's say uh, in one platform, the information is about I'm watching a particular sneaker, but not buying it. But in another platform where I've actually purchased it, like I was just looking at that particular sneaker on the website, but I bought it from the offline store. But that that information that I bought it from the offline store is not there with the online uh, platform. Online platform is still thinking that I've not bought that sneaker. So there's, there's no real time sync between the data that has happened. So in order to like get that real time sync, data unification happens. Hope that makes sense yes. to you as well to you as well let's, uh, let's move on to the next step that's calculated insights calculated insights basically mean that once you've got all of the data that you want to work upon and do some predictions on or uh, make some or get some insights from you're going to pass it on to analytics or some AI predictions or something like that from where you're going to get some calculated insights uh, and, and yeah, I mean, you're going to figure out whether or what action you can take based on the calculated insights. So that that's something that you're going to do. And then you do the data segmentation and what happens in data segmentation? In data segmentation, we are kind of segmenting the data into, you know, at a, at a much more uh, granular level, like, you know, a particular person uh, from New York region itself only for a particular brand or for a particular category. We segment the data accordingly. Like we want a segment of all the individuals who are interested in, uh, let's say, buying a laptop from which are from New York and they are from age range of 30 to 40. So we can create that segment and use it for our personalized marketing efforts. I just wanted your help in order to take some breath because I've been speaking for a long time. I Let me explain what data segmentation is for you. Data segmentation. <laughs> yeah. Shall I proceed? Yes. All right. Data segmentation is similar to segmenting the email lists, right? It's nothing different. You're segmenting the audience set that you've got based on different characteristics, based on different demographics, based on different choices that they all have and plan actions accordingly. That's all what it is. Uh, then comes Einstein Builder. I earlier used to call it Einstein Builder, but recently I got to know that I should call it as Einstein Builder. So I learned it really well. It's, it's, it's a low code and no code platform that allows uh, the user to like use the, uh, uh, I mean, to deploy the custom AI model that they can generate uh, the, the name that uh, Vishjit used earlier, AWS Sage, Sage Maker, Maker uh, can be used to create their own AI model, which can then be integrated or utilized with, uh, or can be utilized with uh, Salesforce Data Cloud yes. in order to make predictions. So that's what Einstein Builder is. Then comes data activation. Data activation, You it might sound that you have activated some data and it will do something on its own and there'll be some rocket that will be launched and will be landed in, on moon in next three months, but it's not something like that. It's just sending that information to different other platforms that you want to send it to. So data activation is just data sending from Salesforce Data Cloud to other platforms. Am I correct? Yes. All right, out of the box connectors in Salesforce Data Cloud, let's talk about them. B2C Commerce, for B2C Commerce, we already have a out of box connector. Earlier we talked about it that in order to connect the different platforms uh, with the Salesforce Data Cloud, there are of course uh, API integrations that could be done, but nobody nowadays want to do that. Everybody wants to configure all of the integrations uh, just like that with with some uh, points and clicks and uh, in order to, and, and salesforce of course masters in that uh, and hence it has created some out of the out of the box connectors which already provides you uh, are we good huh. uh, so uh, which already uh, which already provides you the access or the ways to connect different Salesforce clouds or even other platforms with Salesforce data cloud, just like that. So B2C commerce is one of them. Marketing cloud is of course, uh, one of them, Salesforce CRM, websites and mobile apps. Uh, when we talk about websites and mobile apps, uh, you get an SDK, which you can integrate with uh, the mobile app that you are creating. And uh, every touch point that your customer uh, 
leaves onto your mobile app is going to get transferred uh, to Salesforce Data Cloud, which is going to again collect a lot of information for you, uh, which can, which in turn can be utilized uh, to provide them a better experience. Then comes ingestion API, uh, of course. If nothing works out, we can use this one. <laughs> Interaction Studio for Marketing Cloud, uh, we've got uh, an, a connector for that as well. Uh, then comes Google Cloud Storage, uh, we, have, we already have a pre-built connector. Azure Blob Storage, uh, we've got a pre-built connector and external activation platforms. Uh, so when we want to send it to some other platforms, we already have a connector to that as well.